My name is John Dawson and I'm going to uh, demonstrate how to uh, make a glass palette. Now if uh, you uh, are a student and um, you're doing paintings at some other location or a very limited space, these, uh, these little palettes, uh, this is a paper palette that you can buy at the art, um, art supply store, or these little uh, uh, masonite palettes are probably just fine. If you have a, an actual studio space, a, um, a glass palette is really much better to use. And uh, I'm going to show you uh, my palette uh, that I've been using for the last, um, gee, almost 40 years. After I built the studio in 1978, I made this palette and put it on this uh, large, very heavy table. And it's been here ever since. So you can see a, a glass palette can uh, last quite a long time. Um, and the advantage to a glass palette is real simple. It's much easier to mix paint and it's much easier to clean the, the palette. We'll just uh, scrape these uh, dabs of paint off. And then uh, you take a, uh, a paint scraper and you just scrape off the dry paint like that. And it's as simple as that to, uh, to clean your palette. Now the materials you'll need to, uh, to make a palette. First you'll need a sheet of glass, like this one. This particular uh, piece of glass, I think, came out of a picture frame. So you could use an old sheet of glass that came out of a picture frame or some other source. Or you could have one uh, cut at... Um, a lumber yard like uh, Home Depot, Lowe's, or, um, or a glass supply place. You'll need a, a panel, either a plywood panel or a press, uh, press wood panel, press board panel. This, uh, this one is about a uh, half inch thick. It should, should be at least about a half an inch thick. Then you'll need uh, screen molding. You could also use half round or quarter round. Uh, I find the screen molding uh, works the best, but either one of those other two things will also work. This can also be obtained at uh, Home Depot. Then uh, I'm using um, 1x4. For a palette this small, 1x4 is a little bit overkill, but I'm assuming that anyone who's going to make a palette is probably going to make a larger one. Uh, for a small palette like this, which I'll probably be using to uh, to mix ink for um, uh, etchings or uh, lithography, uh, you could probably get away with one by twos. Then you'll uh, need um, some kind of white paint. I'm going to use gesso. You could use gesso, or you could use any any kind of white paint. And you'll need uh, some wood glue, and then either. Uh, uh, Gorilla Glue, or you can also use uh, epoxy. Epoxy is a little harder to use, but unfortunately the Gorilla Glue dries a kind of a caramel color, which um, may or may not be uh, something you'd want to have uh, underneath the, the glass of the palette, but it is a lot easier to use. I'll also be using um, some Scotch fasteners. Uh, these could probably get, uh, uh, you can probably get these at most any um, hardware store. You don't absolutely have to have these for this, but I think it helps. And then um, I'm also going to be using some little brads. Once again, these aren't absolutely necessary, but uh, you'll see how they're used uh, later on. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is paint the panel white. It's important for the panel to be white. Because when you mix your colors, if the, um, the panel underneath is a, a different color, it will influence the, uh, the way the colors look when they're mixed. So we need to pa paint this um, completely white, and about one coat will do it.
Okay, once you have the panel painted, uh, one coat will probably suffice. Uh, I put uh, two coats on so that it's a, a good flat white. You want to turn it over. And then um, these uh, pieces of one by four are all pre-cut to fit. And we'll put a little wood glue on it. And then we're going to place that down at the edge like that. And then I usually put something heavy on it, like some uh, a couple of books or something, to hold it down. We're going to do that um, all the way around. Like that and glue them down, and then uh, I put one in the center. Now, um, this step, uh, if you're going to uh, make the palette and put it on a, a heavy table and not move it, then you can skip this step. This is only important if you're going to uh, use the palette uh, and store it. Uh, we do this so that the um, the panel won't warp at some point. And that's a real problem in trying to mix paint, or especially if you're going to try to roll up any paint on it if you have a warped, uh, a warped piece of uh, panel underneath. So um, if you're going to use the palette in a, the same location and use it every day as I do and put it down on a, a sturdy table, you don't need to, uh, to do this step. So we'll glue this down and then we'll proceed. Okay, once you have these uh, pieces uh, glued down and they're dry, I like to take these little scotch fasteners and um, pound them in uh, to join the pieces together. It's not absolutely necessary, but I believe it gives it extra strength and uh, aids in uh, trying to keep it from warping in the future. Save time, we've got most of them already pounded in there. That's uh, one there, and we'll put another one here. Okay, uh, now we're um, ready to put the glass down. Um, I probably forgot to mention at the beginning, the panel that you have cut needs to be about two inches all the way around bigger than the glass. Uh, this particular piece of glass is um, 33 by 24. So the uh, panel is um, 35 by 26. It could be actually only an inch and a half bigger, but I usually make it two inches to make sure that it's going to work. And you center the glass, <clears throat> excuse me, you center the glass, and um, then I take a pencil and draw around. Uh, the glass. And we'll take the glass off and we're ready to put the glue on. Now you have uh, a couple of different options as far as glue. Um, I like to use uh, Gorilla Glue because <clears throat> it's a uh, it's a lot easier to use. The one disadvantage is, is it, it dries kind of a caramel color, and you're going to be able to see that um, through the glass uh, on the palette. Um, I don't think it's uh, uh, enough of a difference to influence the paint you're going to mix uh, on the palette, but if that bothers you, then that's uh, 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 not the glue that you probably want to use. Well, since I made this uh, video, I've uh, found that the uh, Gorilla Glue comes in a clear version. And uh, the epoxy that I used uh, didn't dry as uh, clear as I had expected. So uh, the best option really is to uh, 
to buy um, the clear version of the Gorilla Glue to uh, glue down the uh, glass on the palette. Now the reason <clears throat> I drew a line around it is you want to uh, put the glue down uh, well away from the edge so it doesn't squirt out. Once we have it glued down and so forth, I'll go around it with a paper towel to make sure that uh, we don't have any glue that's squirted out at the edges. If that happens, you'll, you'd have to cut it off with a uh, exacto knife. First you have to spritz uh, some water on it. You can probably do this with a damp sponge just as easily. And then you take the Gorilla Glue and uh, just uh, put it around the edge. And as I said, you want to uh, probably be uh, pretty far away from the actual edge of the um, palette so the glue doesn't squirt out. Let's add a little more. Okay, now we have the glass, and you just uh, follow your lines that you drew in, drew in earlier, and pop the glass on top, and then center it wherever you want. I just centered along the lines I had originally made. So I do the same thing as uh, we did before, just put something heavy on it to hold it down until it dries. And then, uh, once it's dry, we'll finish it off with the um, uh, screen molding. Well, after you've uh, applied the glue, um, and if it is uh, squirted out uh, along the edge, you want to take a, a paper towel and uh, clean up the edges so that before the glue dries. Um, in this particular case, uh, none of it's squirted out and it's um, uh, not a problem. Now the next thing we're going to do is uh, apply the screen molding. As I, I mentioned earlier, uh, you could use half round or quarter round. The purpose of the screen molding is to put it along the edge of the glass so that um, in moving the palette or uh, storing the palette, uh, you don't cut yourself. The edge of the glass can be pretty sharp. And also uh, there's a potential, I guess, of chipping the edge of the glass up if you were to uh, move it around much. So uh, this protects the edge of the glass. And um, what we, all we need to do is take the wood glue again and uh, put a little wood glue on the uh, screen molding. And then um, just uh, lay it down against the edge of the glass. And uh, I take... Uh, these little brads and uh, and secure it down with the brads at the ends. Um, this may not be completely necessary, but uh, there's two th things that uh, are um, uh, important about doing this if you're going to do it. One is um, it uh, secures the, uh, the screen molding as tight as uh, uh, possible to the edge of the glass and s secondly sometimes the screen molding is slightly warped and it won't um, lay down uh, properly against the glass and this solves that problem so I usually just use three one on each end and one in the center then uh, in a lot of cases the, um, the glue might squirt out uh, along the bottom. And uh, I like to just uh, take a, a rag or a paper towel and clean it off. In this case, it's, it's not really necessary. The only reason that it was uh, important um, uh, where the glass was concerned is the, the screen molding won't, uh, won't butt up against it properly if it isn't cleaned off completely. So we'll take a minute and... Uh, finish up the screen molding, and then you'll see the finished uh, palette. Well, uh, this is the uh, finished palette, and it's uh, ready for use, or you can uh, 
store it away in a corner or against the wall until you need it. And here's a few examples of uh, my work and um, the uh, web address for uh, my website and Facebook page.